So this is the 2021 F56 Mini Cooper S. It's the LCI 2 version, which means it's received its second facelift. The F56 was released back in 2014, which means it's been around with us now for coming up seven years, which is a surprising amount of time for any platform, really. But it's been insanely popular, we all know that. I'm an ex F56 owner myself. I had a JTW for over three years, and I absolutely love the thing. So I'm really interested to see how this Cooper S stacks up. Now let's kind of just talk a little bit about what's changed with this LCI 2 version and it's mainly aesthetics to be honest. You can see this front bumper is heavily redesigned, it's much much squarer and overall it's just a kind of more modernised look I suppose to fit in with the stuff that we see around these days and actually I think it looks very good. There are unfortunately a few fake vents going on including these ducts down the side, it's a shame they couldn't kind of vent the air into the wheel well or over the brake disc like you see on some cars. In addition to this, we've also got a blocked off bonnet scoop, which is something I saw on the F56 JCW, and it's been around on this platform a little while. Sort of going back to the R56 platform, the one before this, that was actually ducted into the airbox, which is a, a very cool thing to have, but you know, it's a fake vent on this one, which is a bit of a shame. A few more fake vents going on around here on the number plate plinth and the JCW badge, which I'm not the biggest fan of because I personally think that should be reserved for the actual JCW models, but you know, each to their own, I suppose. With the blacked out sort of badging and the headlights around, it's a definitely kind of very stealthy style, but overall, I think it looks very good. Let's jump around to the side to see what's changed there. So actually from the side profile, not too much has changed. The biggest thing is these 18 inch JCW wheels. Now this might look familiar because it was a very, very similar design on the facelifted JCW Clubman a couple of years ago, but actually these are my favorite wheels that Mini do. One of the things I really like about these wheels is just kind of their intricate design and just how kind of high end they look and kind of finishes off the car very nicely from a side profile. One of the things I'm not a big fan of is these plastic kind of wheel arch liners, which, you know, this has been on their 56 basically since they've been released. The problem is over time these fade and they can kind of go quite light colored and they're very difficult to keep looking fresh and new. That's a problem I had on my F56. So they're just not the easiest things to keep on top of. It's a shame they couldn't just extend the metal work down a little bit more just to kind of finish it off. And I suppose that would make it look a little bit more premium as well. But you know, these are built to a price point and it is what it is. From a side profile, I certainly think it still looks very good. But let's jump around to the rear because I think that's possibly the best looking part of this car. So as I mentioned, the rear bumper for me is probably the best looking part of this car. We've got this diffuser effect thing going on. It's very much for aesthetics. There's no kind of aerodynamic things going on here really. But paired with the twin black tailpipes, the blacked out badging, it's just a really aggressive style. And I think it finishes off the kind of overall design of this car very nicely indeed. Another thing of course is the Union Jack taillights. Now these weren't necessarily new to the LCI 2. I think these have been around for probably over a year now. But I think they look very really good. Um, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of these when they first came out, but actually when it's at night and things and all this is illuminated, they look very cool. So yeah, overall big fan of the rear end of this car and big fan of the way this F56 looks. So moving to the interior then of this facelifted F56, the basic architecture is very much recognizable with what we're used to, but everything just looks a little bit more modernized, specifically this screen, everything's kind of blended in more. We've got this nice kind of piano black trim each side of the screen which just makes the whole thing kind of blend into one nice thing as well it just looks great the steering wheel is very much a similar shape and size to what we're used to but it's just a little bit more squared off actually which is interesting you know kind of going back to the exterior of the car but i think it looks very good we've got these kind of nice buttons on here as well just making this feel a little bit more premium i suppose than the previous versions but yeah it's a very comfortable place to be the seats are fantastic these are like the recaro seats they're basically the same ones i had in my jcw I've done many, many miles in these seats and they work very well for kind of all things. There's a good amount of bolstering if you're doing a more spirited drive, but on longer distances, they're not too harsh. So, you know, you're not feeling too uncomfortable by the end of it. The driving position itself is pretty good. You can get nice and low in the seat and there's pretty good visibility. You know, these minis have a good amount of glass around them. It's just very easy to see. We've got big kind of wing mirrors as well going on. So makes it very easy to kind of maneuver this car around in cities, which I suppose is really where they're designed to be. So yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of the interior you're definitely getting a good amount of quality in here for your money so yeah i think it's a very good job
welcome to the Cooper S on the road then. Of course these minis are a lot of fun out on a good set of B-roads like we're on now. And having spent three years in my F56 JCW, yeah, it was certainly a lot of fun. So let's talk a bit about the engine to begin with then. It's the two litre B48 unit that I'm very familiar with now. I've spent a lot of time around these engines and it's probably one of the best four cylinder engines you can actually buy. So in this form produces 178 horsepower. Of course it is turbocharged, so you do get plenty of torque down low. Not very much turbo like with these engines at all actually, which is one of the you know, amazing things about the way they're designed. And yeah, you certainly notice that out on the road. We've got a six speed manual gearbox in this car as well, which means it's the perfect Cooper S spec in my opinion. And yeah, a lot of fun to use. It's a nice gearbox actually. It feels a bit better than the one that I had in my JCW. It's a little bit kind of smoother, a little bit less notchy. It feels very good. Some sort of headline performance figures then, I guess. This car will do 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds and onto a top speed of 145 miles an hour. Pretty adequate, if you'd ask me. I think that would probably do most people. Of course, that 178 horsepower does go a decent way. This car only weighs probably around about the 1,280 kilogram mark. It's not particularly heavy, and in fact, it's probably one of the lighter cars you can get into these days brand new. So on the road, this car is about 24,000 pounds in the UK. Of course, you throw through a few options on there and you immediately looking at much closer to 30,000. But most people are financing these cars anyway, and the PCB deals on these are pretty attractive most of the time. So certainly makes a lot of sense. Pretty, you know, competitively priced compared to the likes of, you know, Volkswagen Polo GTI maybe. You know, very similar price point. So I suppose we should probably talk about what it's like to drive. As I mentioned, it's certainly a lot of fun. It's a car that's designed really to have fun in. So, steering rack, pretty nice weight actually. Feels like it's a little bit lighter than maybe some of the other BMW products that I've driven. But, you know, I really like the way it feels. I also find the steering wheel rim to be pretty much the perfect width. Again, this is not something that we're used to seeing. I don't know whether they've finally taken notice. I know on my JCW, the rim was just way too fat. It's been a thing with BMWs of, you know, probably the last seven or eight years now. This feels much, much better. Okay, so let's stick into sport mode then. 
do a little watch here, see what it's like. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.